Today I get to work on something fun. The chores are done, the kids are at grandma's, and I have a several hour block to work on the first quilt. Uh, so I have plans this winter to make three quilts, one for each of my twin boys and one for me and my husband. This will be my third attempt at a quilt. Uh, the first two I made at the same time, I made it for the boys and I uh, did that rookie mistake where you get such a great deal on this wool batting and then it shrank like nothing else and ruined months of work. Uh, so this time I have invested in some proper batting that is pre-shrunk. Now this is a project I have been having in mind for at least a year now. Uh, the last quilts I made, even though they shrank, they were still very warm. They were very nice. They were still perfectly useful quilts. Uh, but my sons, I've used them for three winters now and now they've outgrown them. So it is time for some new quilts first quilt I'm going to be making will be Samuel's uh, because he is built like me. He, uh, he gets cold easily, um, whereas his brother Robert is uh, built like his father and uh, he is just a furnace in general. He never gets cold. So we're going to do Samuel's quilt first. And just over uh, the last few months as I've had a chance, I've gone ahead and I have uh, use a rotary cutter and mat to cut up um, a bunch of squares from scrap fabric. So I have tons and tons of already cut fabric from all of my old uh, fabric collection from when I made masks and was selling them during the pandemic and donating them during the pandemic. Lots of really cool little kid patterns and just basically whatever fabric I could get my hand on um, I've got now and so I've got a wide collection. I also have a lot of solid color fabrics and one thing um, I had to sell with the old homestead was my old uh, embroidery business. I had uh, an embroidery machine and I did sewing and I did embroidery, uh, but before I sold the machine and the business, I went ahead and took the time to make a bunch of embroidered um, square pieces for this quilt project. These are a bunch of bees, just all different color fabric and all different color thread. And those embroidered squares are going to end up being what makes the overall pattern of the quilt. Each one of these squares is going to be a four by four inch square. I have used my four and a half inch by four and a half inch template to cut out a whole bunch of squares from my leftover fabrics. And the embroidered ones are going to be these little M's. And that's just going to give some pattern. Mostly I want it to look random. You know, it's going to be a patchwork quilt. It's going to be in a house in the middle of the woods in the middle of nowhere. So I figured go with it. Uh, but the embroidered will at least give a little bit of structure to the quilt. The batting I am using, it's a queen size. So for the boys, their quilt is going to be 108 inches by 90 inches, the batting. The quilt I am making 26 by 22 squares, which will be 104 by 88 inches, which ends up being 572 squares. 94 of those squares will be this yellow border. For this quilt, for my son Samuel, his favorite color is blue and he likes space and he wanted this fabric that I had that has kind of these spacey constellation things for the border so that's what we're going to do for his. For my son Robert he is uh, his favorite color is red and he wants to be a firefighter. Well actually as of this morning he wants to be a king astronaut and drive a taco truck in space but he also likes firefighters, so we're going with this. So 94 of those squares will be the border, 81 squares will be embroidered, and that leaves 397 other squares, and today I'm going to be organizing that. Hi. 
my life pie. Thanksgiving's coming. We should make some fun. Alright, so we've done the counting. I have 397 non embroidered squares. I have 94 bo uh, border squares. And I have 80 embroidered squares. So, next step before I can actually start sewing this thing is to lay everything out in 4x4 four four grids. So, each one of these larger squares here is a 4x4 four four grid, which is going to be four squares by four squares. And this indicates, you know, where the embroidered ones are, and it's going to keep me organized. And the idea is that I'm going to sew up, instead of sewing a big, huge line, that I then have to try to match the seams up, you know, with the next door neighbor line. Uh, and I'm not that confident in my uh, sewing abilities. I tend to uh, just sew by eyeball. Instead, I'm going to sew 16 square uh, blocks, and then I'm going to sew the blocks together. Just to give you all an idea of what I'm talking about here, this is going to be my first four by four square that I will be sewing together. So this corresponds with this grid right here. I'll be doing the borders separately and attaching them later. But I'm doing this square, which means I need a diagonal of embroidery tiles, and the rest are just random. So I've got diagonal of embroidery tiles, four by fours. I will sew these together as a unit. And the way I'm going to keep that organized, the heck am I going to keep that organized? And the way I'm going to keep that organized is I'm going to stack them like so. And then I will sew them in that order so I already know if they look correct. now I have the first grid block and I know a lot of you are you know wringing your hands because I'm not ironing the uh, seams together um, I may or may not do that unless I have all the blocks done and just um, lay down flat as I can I kind of like the little messier look um, for a final product um, it is patchwork quilt and I do kind of you know, these aren't pre-washed, I do want them to shrink a little bit and get that kind of nice little wrinkly look. Um, so, we're going to go with that. But no, I'm, I'm purposefully not ironing down uh, the seams here. Normally you'd get an iron and you press that to make it all super tidy. I don't want these to look super tidy. I want these to look like a quilt made out of a bunch of scraps by a mom in her spare time. I want it to look rugged. Uh, so. But I, uh, I think it's cute, and now I just gotta go and do this 30 more times.
Okay, those of you who sew, you know a sewing flex when you hear one. Two days. Two days. Okay, and now that I have my giant pile of completed blocks done, I just need to reference back to my original plan. Go along the perimeter square by square. This is going to be this top left corner here and I need to see where I need to attach the border. That is going to go all the way around this uh, highlighted area. So since this is going to be the top left corner of the quilt, I've got it oriented correctly so everything is, the pictures are facing up, and I will sew the border on the top and on the left. So now I have all four corners sewn up. Well, according to my graph uh, and so now all I have to do is do the in-betweens and the nice thing about this pattern is it really is broken up into blocks that have embroidery on a diagonal like this one does has embroidery on a diagonal and blocks that do not have any embroidery like this top corner up here doesn't have any embroidered panels so that way I am able to just see, like I need, for the top, I need three. One needs to have no embroidery and I need two from the diagonal. When I do the side, I'm going to need one, two, three that have embroidery and one that doesn't, and so on. Alright, so now it is time for me to sew all of the quilt blocks together. And this is going to be the first row basically. And this corresponds to this row here. So I've got my corner block here and then I have an embroidery diagonal, an embroidery diagonal, a no embroidery, embroidery diagonal, and this corner. And what I'm doing now is I'm just lining it up. The corners are set. They already have all their borders on there and I am just making sure everything kind of doesn't match up. So like for instance, over here I just laid them out. I've got two squares of the same fabric matching up and I kind of want it a little more random. So uh, this square here is no embroidery but I have three squares of embroidery in the middle to play with. So I'm just going to swap those so that I don't have any of those matching up and then I will get to sewing. So here is the finished quilt topper. Uh, it is an oversized queen. I wanted something that they could really curl up with and something that they could take with them as they grew up and moved on um, out of the house. So this is actually sitting on our king size bed right now. And as you can see, it goes all the way down, but it's it is a little short on the side. That's because it's a queen, but Seeing as how it's going to be on a twin for a while, it's going to be a nice giant oversized quilt. I am really happy with how it came out. All of these diagonal embroidery all along here. It's just beautiful. There was only one section where two of the same fabric matched up, matched up but that's fine. It looks fabulous as far as all of the randomness goes. I'm just really excited about this. 
So I'm going to end this video here. In the second part, I will be finishing this quilt, uh, getting the batting on there, doing the, um, the border, quilting it all together, which will be fun. I've never uh, tried to quilt a queen on my tiny little Singer machine, so that will be interesting. Um, and I've also been trying to keep track of how much time I have spent on this, and I will have the breakdown analysis for uh, how much investment this quilt costs as far as time goes. So check that out when it comes out. And until then, thank you so much, and thanks for watching.